All right, so the next one I'm going to show is, if you remember me talking in the last technique about getting your hip beat. So many times, especially when guys are bigger, okay, we're always taught to nail escape. The problem is this, and literally, what do you mean? You can't always nail escape. All right, sometimes it's too late to nail escape. Okay, when is it too late? Once your hip is beat, you could no longer nail escape. All right, so when you're nail escaping, sometimes it's already too late, and you're wondering, man, I'm trying to do everything right. I'm doing everything the way I was taught, and I'm still getting my guard passed. It's because if you've seen any of my previous instructionals, I've said before, there are certain principles that remain the same. When I'm on the offense, I'm trying to take away the space from my opponent. When I'm on the defense, I'm trying to create space. The key is being able to be offensive and defensive, all right, right away. So the moment we defend, we're immediately attacking in our offense, all right? If we're being offensive, we're ready for our partner to defend immediately, then look to be offensive. So we have to be able to be offensive as soon as we're, I'm at defensive, as soon as we're done being offensive. So we have to be able to have the ability to go back and forth. So creating space, okay? And we can't always nail escape. So let's just look at something real quick. He's gonna stand in front of me. He walks to my hip and he walks to my hip. Now, from this position, all right, it's very hard to nail escape. My hip, is already beat, all right? Yes, there's inversion drills that we can do, which we're gonna go over, okay? But right now, it's very hard to just the elbow escape, okay? So, the problem is if your partner's standing above you, this is the first problem, laying down, all right? If our partner's standing above us and we're laying down, dangling our feet, this is gonna give our partner everything they need to pass, okay? They're gonna be able to leg drag, and they're always going to run faster than we can move on the bottom. So I encourage you, if your partner is standing above you, to start sitting up. Okay? Now, you see when people are sitting up, if he was to step by me, again, from here, for me to the elbow escape or just simply turn into him, he can run faster than I could spin. All right, so if he were to go as fast as he could around me, he beat me, okay? He has the guard pass because he's beating my hip. And I see this happen all the time. The simple drill that we're gonna do is very, very easy. I'm standing in front of my partner. My partner starts walking to the side. I'm pulling my hips away from my partner. He comes back in. He's gonna, he's gonna go to the other side. My hips are gonna scoot away. Now, the moment you scoot away, we're pulling ourselves back in. Because we want to have the inside control. All right, this is somewhere where we want to be. So I just don't want to pull my hips back and stay back. But let's say I'm to the inside, and even if my partner starts pulling my head and he starts passing in any direction, I'm pulling my hips back, and now I'm coming back in. So how he would drill this, he's gonna go side to side, whichever side he chooses, all right? Go ahead back. Every time I come back in, I'm getting inside control. I'm creating space, and then I'm taking up the space. Understand the concepts and the principles that I'm saying, because this concept carries through not just to this guard recovery, it's every position that we're in. Creating and taking away, okay? So remember, we're sitting here, if our partner goes to beat our hip, the easiest way to recover is simply to pull ourselves away, okay? And then we re-enter, here we go.